Good afternoon guys, welcome once again to the Grand Union Canal, the stretch I've been fishing lately. As you can see behind me, I'm just starting to get my gear set up. It's about half past five now. It's uh, Wednesday the 12th of May today. And uh, I've come down for a bit of a mix and match session today. I've brought with me my uh, Maver pole, which I'm gonna do a bit of fishing in the edge, uh, possibly out into the middle. Uh, I brought my ultralight with me so I can do a bit of feeder fishing if I fancy it, if the boats die down and uh, Perhaps we could target a bigger fish that way. And I've also, because of the <laughs> pike trouble I've had here, if I'm sure you've seen in the past, if you've seen the previous videos, I say pike trouble, I do like catching them, so it's not a problem. Um, I bought my uh, a dead baiting rod as well. But we'll go through the gear as and when we use it. I'm gonna start on the pole. I'm gonna get in just over here. I've just put a little bit of ground bait and a little bit of um, a few maggots in, loose feed in the edge here. I'm not gonna feed the middle until I'm gonna fish out in the track as well but I shan't do that until the boats die down but it seems fairly quiet with boats today so who knows we uh we may have a quiet day on the boat front but uh yeah quite looking forward to it I haven't been out for quite a while so uh, quite a while a week or so so yeah I'm looking forward to this so guys as you can probably see the weather's fairly good today got a nice uh, gentle breeze got a uh, reasonably warm few days I did chuck it down with rain the other day uh, some more rain due tomorrow, but yeah, weather's looking reasonable. Lovely. It's warmed up a little bit. I'm going to fish till, well, certainly into dark, I would think. Assuming the fishing's going to be reasonable, that is. So, uh, I'll put some clothes with me. We'll fish into dark. We'll just suck it and see a little bit. Um, exactly what we're going to do. Um, uh, play it by ear. I've got everything on the kitchen sink today. So I'm going to start, as I said, on the pole. This is just down to my left here. I should touch on baits. Baits bottle with me. I've got some, I've got maggots, worms, um, I've got some bread, I've got a bit, little bit of lunch meat, a little bit of sweet corn, uh, covering all the bases really. And, um, for the pike fishing, I've got some smelt. Should we do any predator fishing, that is? It just depends how it goes. A bit of a moody stretch I've discovered here, so we'll, We'll suck it and see a little bit. But first put in. The anticipation is <laughs> it's great. And I do love it down here. It's a lovely stretch. So I've got a bite already, look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it's about that. Puh, soaking me. And one of the big draws down here for me is our first fish, which is a silver bream. Only a little one. But uh, yeah, I would like to catch a, another decent one down here. Yeah. I had that one, I had a pound a few weeks ago. Lack of prep, should get my discord right first really, shouldn't I? I had that one, yeah, about uh, just over a pound a few weeks ago. Caught quite a lot of ones that size last time out. It'd be nice to catch some, some real big ones. I think the British record only, which I had a look, it's just over three pound these days, the British record, but uh, yeah, that would be something very special <laughs> to get anything, well a pound and a half would be certainly very special, but you know, this stretch of canal has been absolutely wonderful to me, so I'm not going to get greedy, I'm just happy to come to the canal and just catch some fish. I would like a big run out of here and a big silver bream before the river season starts in just over, just over a month's time. <laughs> so I am a bit greedy, I guess. <laughs> I'm hoping the fish will be up for a feed today as it's been warm for a few days, as I say. It's, it's been very mild. A bit of fresh, fresh rain in the water as well, which I'm sure can only help certainly helps with the rivers I would imagine it will help with the canal as well but I'm absolutely no expert on the canal at all actually uh, chatting to my friend Mick a few minutes ago and he's planning a session as well I told him I was out so he's going to come along here so he'll be joining me later on he'll I would imagine be predator fishing that's the guy a little bit further along as well, about 100 metres away from me at the moment. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. He's fishing, but uh, I'm not quite sure what he's after. So 
So yes, yeah, so I should probably be here for a bit. Good luck anyway. Well guys, I was just having a nice chat with a chap I actually saw a picture of on Facebook the other week and he seen me see my videos. And a chinwag. He's uh doing a bit of Xander fishing. Put the world to rights we were. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few fish. Small rudd, small roach, slightly better roach. I've actually only baited one swim today, but it definitely seems a bit better. No pike trouble as of yet. But it definitely, it definitely seems a bit better than that funny old session we had last time when we were here. I may. I may bait and swim a little bit further along and try and get two going at the moment. But since I've been here, there's not a single boat been passed. So I'm tempted to put some bait out in the track as well. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to put a bit of bait out there as well, I think, in the track. Because for some reason, for some reason, we haven't had a boat go past. But it's sods law, isn't it? As soon as I, as soon as I put a, uh, a bit of bait out there. It's going to come past and churn it all up. And the annoying thing is, not only is it a bit of a waste of bait, it's, um, but you know, can't be helped. But the issue is that it spreads my bait all over the place. That's that's my real problem with, with it. So that's why I don't like to go out in the track too early, but I won't put too much in. Just put literally some tiny balls in like that and it's, it's very, very dryly mixed as well. So it's going to sort of cloud on the way down. It's probably not even going to get to the bottom. The canal's not towing much at the moment, so... We'll, uh, we'll just prime it for five minutes before we go out there. If I could throw maggots far enough, I would. Bait out there. So we've had, as I say, we've had a few fish, but it's not exactly, uh, it's not exactly prolific again. Probably caught half a dozen fish. No, biggest being, I don't know, three ounces, I should think. <laughs> huge but it's got a little bit of a flash I think it's probably oh that's a skinner <laughs> I thought for a minute we'd got a silver bream on there I saw a flash of silver in the deep body and I thought ah we've got a we've got a silver bream on no we've got his cousin instead <sighs> silver bream's cousin from the slimy side of the family just fishing a size 20 drenin red maggot hook and a, and a red maggot on the hook at the moment and it's, it's good three and a half foot deep just the other side of those reeds so it's, it's not much shallower than the actual out in the track so it's um it's decent decent place to fish you know, fish you know, it's not a problem for fish to come in there's not that much foot traffic along here so it's not really an issue as far as disturbance goes there's not really much disturbance that pushes a fish across but we will have a go out in the track in a minute it is the same rig for now we'll go out there and we'll probably be I'm just on the bottom here so we'll probably be between six inches and a foot off bottom out there, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Sort of in the fish's eye line as they're swimming around. We'll just see how we get on. Might might go with some slightly heavier gear as the procession progresses. I'll just say how it is. Perhaps uh, you know, perhaps go on a maybe a, I don't know, size fourteen or something. A bit of bread flake or 
something along those lines perhaps try and pick out a nice rud or a, a nice roach well I think we'll wait till it till it gets a little bit darker the sun's still well up at the moment we'll wait till we're more likely to to get a bigger fish although I haven't said that you know rud don't seem to mind the sunshine they like it don't they I do really want to catch a tench from here as well <laughs> before uh, before we get back on the rivers I've got some uh, videos in mind as well to do before the, the season I do often get asked about my, my gear and my setup and especially this bag that I take with me my bucket bag so I'll, uh, I'll have a run through that for everybody Keen to do a little bit more pole fishing in the dark as well because uh, I was actually doing some editing today of my first pole fishing into dark session and uh, it was good. I, I, I've realised that you can actually see the float on the uh, on the footage, which is good. There we go, Got that straight away, and this is a better fish. Not sure what it is. Can lead him aside. It's probably a <laughs> Come on, you come. I don't know, too cavalier. I've only got tangled and off bottom on. Yeah, it's a green, I think. And that's nice. I definitely, uh, some fish about today, isn't there? This one's a bright scrap. Come on. <laughs> It's definitely a bream, look at the line. <laughs> but yeah, that was off bottom as well. So there's clearly, <laughs> clearly a fish fish out there. Oh, oh. Let's try and get this off. Oh, geez. These canal bream, so slimy. I'm sitting in a pass out, the ones that catch on the Avon and not that slimy. I don't know, perhaps it's me, perhaps I just don't notice, but the ones here, wow, and it's that thick, I can't actually get it off the line. I think we're going to have a good session today. I nearly didn't come out, to be honest with you. <laughs> Been, as I say, working all day from home, and it was, uh, again, late, and I was thinking, oh, shall I, shan't I? I wasn't sure what to do. Couldn't really decide. I thought, oh, come on. Made, made myself almost. It's just, it's not tiring sitting around working on the computer, you know, designing and drawing stuff, but uh, it's mentally tiring and you just kind of think, oh, I can't be bothered. But uh, I did. I'm glad I could be bothered now. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing special yet, but you know, you get that fisherman, you get a feel for the place and how it's fishing, and it's fishing well today. So, I think when conditions are a little bit better, as in the sun goes down, I think we may do all right. It's not going crazy, don't get me wrong, I want to work at it, but. It's it's all right. It's going all right. There we go. That's a red. Straight to the top. Get him out the area. There we go. That's a nice fish. <laughs> very feisty these rods in here there he is lovely stuff wonderful in the uh, afternoon sunshine well it's quite out there 
let's, uh, let's try in here again for a minute. Having said that, I'll put yellow maggot on. Maybe that's made a difference, I'm not sure. Also, bizarre as it may seem, um, for those of you fish canals, you'll know this, but those of you who don't, won't, is that canals, they will move both ways on occasion. There's a, there's a general flow one way, which is sort of flowing downhill, effectively. But also, it does tend to, the water will sort of over overcompensate, over move downhill when someone opens a lock, and it will bounce back as well. I do get more bites when it's going downhill than when it's running back. When it's running back, I do tend to struggle to get a bite, to be honest. Now that's a wonderful sight in these days of otters. Congratulations, keep them safe. Because I did in fact see an otter along here last time I was here. And he'll soon have them. As we know, uh, as I know from living next to the river, I take all the signets by my house every single year, the otters. Oh, blimey. That was something like a predator attack on a bush on the other side. I think it might be worth... Might be worth breaking out the predator rod. Bit of a rethink. Get the predator gear out. Yeah, I think we'll we'll take five. We get the predator rod out. I'm also going to set up my rig for out there. And set it up so we're on the bottom. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll take five. Have a little bit of a setup. Oh, that person's came in their motorbike down the road. Right, let's get sorted. My predator rod is actually a very light carp rod. Fox Warrior TT, 12 foot, two and a quarter pound test curve. Some decent pike in here. I've got a Shimano bait runner on ST4000 FB. Keep and cheerful. I hope you can hear me over the top of somebody on the road over there thinking he's driving around Brands Hatch. So what I've, what I've got is I've actually just running with a very light running ledger setup. I've got two LG shot on there, just on a link ledger effectively. That's on a a running ledger rig, just a. a a, a big run ring, barbel run ring actually. Got a tulip bead on there just to protect the swivel, quick chain swivel, and I've got some Drenner soft strand and a circle hook, one of my Sakuma 440 circle hooks on there that I like to use. And as I say, bait wise, I've just got to smelt. That's all I've brought with me. I've got my biggest pike and my biggest sander on smelt, so when I'm Trying to not bring too much kit with me. I'm doing a bit of everything. That's what I bring. <laughs> it's definitely my go-to bait. Just gonna literally put half a smelt on. I like to jab it a few times as well, just to let some juices out. Just crush the barb on this circle hook. Just to ease of removal and I literally just gonna do that that's it and I pick it out to some cover on the other side where I just saw that splosh now I'm gonna need to obviously if a boat comes I'm gonna have to get that in I actually bought a rear rest for me today which I often don't do like that there we go so if you hear the alarm shout if you've got a run <laughs> hmm ah, what's this shot under pretty fast 
wherever it is he's pulling back properly pulling back <laughs> Like a brie. <laughs> yes, proper one. Proper one, like the ones I'd expect to catch after dark. It shows I'll get right in the edge. Another one. Another male again. <laughs> Looking at the tubercles. <laughs> There's a fish. That's lovely. <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah, that properly shot under. Like a, like a small fish bite. It's <laughs> straight in there. You can only imagine that they're down there rushing about, perhaps, grabbing the maggots as they fall. Oh, I didn't explain my groundwork, did I? Um, as usual, when I come down here, I've seen my previous videos, non-fish non meal ground bait, mixed with some white crumb, mixed, mixed up very dry. It's literally just cloud in the water as it goes down. Follow that in with a few maggots. really hold myself back fishing the canals to feed very sparingly I tend to fill it in a bit <laughs> it's almost like I'm on a mission to get rid of all my maggots just love getting the feed in <laughs> oh, I'm not going out like there though at the moment that side of the canal is now in shade I would have thought perhaps fish were Hanging about over there, I don't seem to be. The canal's not very coloured either. Never colours up too much up here, but it's, it's not coloured at all at the moment. Well, oh God, it's gone a bit quiet in the track and in the edge. It's gone very quiet. I make mix here, so if you hear me chatting away, I don't know what it is. But yeah, it's uh, very quiet. No poke attention to the keep net either. This is a bit strange. I've seen a little fish jump out close in. I've just put a bait there, but yeah, it's a bit strange really. It's all gone a bit gone a bit quiet. Hopefully. It'll pick up a bit when it's uh it's a little bit darker. Fingers crossed. Just keeping the bait trickling in. Actually, that reminds me. I haven't got. I can't. Still haven't quite got into feeding with them. <laughs> with a pole in my hand, yet I can't left handedly throw loose feed far enough. Get a bit more bait out. Try and do it in a bit of a line across the canal. I don't want it too tight. Just want to sort of try and intercept any fish that are moving through. Oh, there's a little bit of movement down by my keep net. <laughs> a little bit of movement on my float right there. <laughs> you may. A point of interest down here. That is feathering. Maybe worth um, just jigging my bait up and down. Lovely little, I think, silver bream. Sure, it is. It's not at all slimy. So I think that's a little silver bream. Finally. Finally, we've got a bite. <laughs> that looks a bit brainy. 
Oh no, it's red, I think. I'm going to stay on my back. Six, six inches off bottom, nine inches off bottom. That's a reasonable red. Well, guys, there we are. That's a weight, but uh, it's a nice rod. <laughs> Just running this uh, shallow rig through about six or nine inches off bottom. It's, uh, it's been probably the best part of an hour since I've had a bite. That was very welcome. This is a nice rig as well. Oh, nice one. <laughs> Excuse the fingers, guys. I'm hanging on to him tightly. He's been very feisty. <laughs> Lovely rod. Let's risk it. <laughs> Fab. When the actual match starts out first, you should be a load of people going. Oh, what's this? With the rudder, I think. Oh, you go out there. That's a nice rudder. Come on. Oh. oh, that's a nice one. Well, they've come on now, definitely. What about that? <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Right. Another one, hopefully. Yeah, not quite so big this one. Faster. I'm definitely some bread in here now. It's oh, about that. <laughs> Revenge, revenge for catching him. I'm going to persevere in the edge for a bit. So I can still see the float. My ground bait's fizzing up out there, which tells me there's, there's fish out there. But uh, I'm sure we'll catch some bream out there. But I'm sure we'll catch some bream out there in an hour, whereas I won't be able to fish down here in an hour. But I suppose I could with the torch on, but uh, I'm not sure it'll be quite so successful. We'll fish down here while we're catching these nice rudd. And then we'll go out there. And I'll get the torch on. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'll, I'll skim a torch beam across the top of the water to illuminate the float. So once again, it's dusk and things are picking up as you're moving. I'm still getting bites down here. I'm going to persevere for a minute. So this is my torch that I use. It's just off eBay. It's a USB rechargeable torch. It has a focusable beam on it so I can make the beam effectively parallel. Try and lean that float down here. The console can read the bloody disc. Blimey. Just don't feel small. <laughs> Probably a brain. <laughs> going. <laughs> Hybrid. It doesn't feel fast enough that. It's quite yeah. slow and ploddy. It's probably a bream. It could be a bream, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was it the hybrid? Do you know, I was just thinking that. Looks a, doesn't look proper true bream meat, but blimey it's heavy. That's a hybrid, isn't it? That's definitely a hybrid.
That's the size of that. <laughs> Bloody hell, you need to, need to weigh that. <laughs> Seems to be a hybrid. <laughs> an, an absolute lump of a hybrid at that. <laughs> Definitely a bit of roach in there. It's not got a long enough anal fin to be a, a true bream. It looks very breamy. Wow, it's definitely my biggest hybrid ever. <laughs> well, now I'm glad I came. Oh, look. <laughs> definitely some bream in it. <laughs> Your food's brought out. Your food don't stay warm, does it? No. Right? <laughs> yes. Simple bring maybe? No. Oh yeah, a silver bream. No specimen, but nice little silver bream. <laughs> still fishing right in the edge. I'm still getting bites, so I'm um, fishing by torchlight in the edge. I hope you can see what's going on. I am intending on going out in the track, but it doesn't seem a lot of point when I'm getting bites. Well, it's gone very quiet in the edge, not surprisingly, with all the <laughs> me putting the light on and stuff on the camera. So, uh, going out in the track. Seems a bit quiet out there as well at the moment, and floats not being buffeted about. Oh, says that, gets a bite straight away. There we go. <laughs> what is this? Stick the light on. There we are guys, <laughs> didn't take long out in the track, <laughs> lovely job. I've had the biggest, the biggest cray fish I've ever caught, <laughs> hanging on to a lobworm when I was fishing like the chub there. Yeah look, see what I mean? Yeah. Ah, fish. <laughs> so you, I just, <laughs> it's like is it, is it not? I'm not so sure. On, um, on the meat, yeah, oh, right, it's pulling. <laughs> wow. Well guys we're on. <laughs> Just talking about whether or not it was crayfish, and this is, this is off up the canal, to be honest. Whee! He's off up the canal. So, what this is, but it's uh, tearing the place up. Well, it is a bream. Oh, it's tearing off at the canal, then. <laughs> now he's coming in like a dog on a leaf. Changed his mind, he's off again. Come on. Oh. I didn't know. Too long. That's a hybrid again, I think. It's another hybrid, I think. That would explain why it tore off. <laughs> As well, that goes. Another hybrid. Fantastic. <laughs> Cracking session. I don't want to lunch and meat. <laughs> Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, go on. Here we go. <laughs> With two minds whether to strike that or not. <laughs> the slab. It's a proper bream, very slimy. <laughs> Do a bit of better 
job of landing them. Now I've got my landing net handle sorted. <laughs> the feisty fella. <laughs> Fantastic. I think I'm going to call it a day at that. I'll get this one in the net and uh, I'm going to pack up and we'll have a look at them. Well guys, let's have a look at some of these as we put them back. Some lovely hybrids. <laughs> Bream, Rudd, a lot today, haven't we? Fab. Just put a few of these bigger ones back separately. <laughs> Is that lovely Rudd we had? Wonderful. Male fish covered in tubercles, that male Bream. This other hybrid Bream. <laughs> That's him, I think. Got two wonderful hybrid hybrids. Some lovely rudd, silver bream. What is that there? That's the cracking rudd. <laughs> Very feisty. Pull this net through. After we'll go rolling down the net. So home time once again, just over five hours of fishing. So that was very, very enjoyable session. Uh, predators were bizarrely quiet, strangely quiet for here. Usually getting bothered by the pike as you've seen in the past, but nothing really doing tonight. One aborted take and one sort of finicky little take that never really took off in the first place. A little, a few twitches, but that was it really. And both within the space of five minutes or so. The rod has stayed really quiet aside from that. Um, and say for Mick, one sort of finicky little take and sort of almost fish messing around with the bait and, and that was it. But no, no signs of any pike tonight, which is very, very strange for you. Anyway, there's always next time, isn't there? So yeah, the uh, the pole fishing, the silverfish fishing went really well. A stonking hybrid, certainly my biggest hybrids. I didn't, I didn't weigh them, but uh, certainly a couple of pound. Um, so yeah, beautiful hybrids. Um, and a few silver bream, some lovely rudd, and of course those bream at the end, as as expected. And I was actually chatting with Mick at the end, just couldn't decide whether some of the bites were crayfish or not. But I've never actually pulled one out here. They often hang on to the bait, but a lot of the the bites look a bit crayfishy to me. But then I'll hook a fish, you know, a bite or two later um, after I've missed a couple, a couple of air bites where where I've done connected with nothing. Um, so yeah, who knows? But uh, maybe a few crays down there. Uh, I'm talking single crayfish that is so yes I think I'll be out uh, got a session planned towards the weekend now uh, but for now thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed that tight lines enjoy your own angling many thanks to the channel patrons for your wonderful support and I'll see you all again very soon